since I'm actually wearing a proper pants, you can see that this isn't going to be a regular video. Finally time for a full collection tour. A lot of things has changed since I recorded my last collection tour. I have a lot of new additions and we will go through all of them. But before we begin, a little disclaimer. Majority of animals in my collection are actually tarantulas. So in case you don't like them or you are even scared of them, don't click away because I get a lot of comments from people that are saying how they are afraid of spiders but watching my videos or learning about them helps them lose that fear and to some it even sparks an interest into spiders, I mean tarantulas. So give these little hairy fellas a chance. Also I will be announcing details for giveaway but more on that on the end of this video so make sure to watch everything. Now as you can see this is majority of my collection, majority of animals are here. I have some other animals on other places but this is the majority. In these enclosures I have mostly adult females. In these enclosures I have younger females, males or unsex tarantulas. Also I have two females here. And all of these small cups that you can see are unsexed slings. So let's begin, shall we? Over here is where we will start. Or maybe not. I'm not sure if we should first go through slings or adults. Actually, let's start with few proper tarantulas. Let's start with middle shelf, then bottom shelf, and then rest. So this first enclosure is where you can see the classic problem that we tarantula owners are facing. You have a tarantula, but you actually don't have a tarantula, because it is somewhere inside. And there is really nothing you can do about it. But luckily, I already have video clips. I mean recordings from majority of my spiders. So I will also play that along in case I cannot show you tarantula at this very moment. So yeah, in this enclosure, Brachypelma opilosum, adult female. I parried her and exec was unfortunately unsuccessful. Next one. This one you can actually see. Let me just take a poking stick so I can get it on the open. So this is oh, she's not satisfied. But yeah, this is this is Chromatopelma cyane pubescens, mature female. I also have a male that I will show you later. This is amazing species for beginners. It webs a lot, it eats a lot, and it's usually out on the open, so you can actually see it all the time. In this enclosure, I have one Asian tarantula. It is Hilobrachis huahini, also mature female. Unfortunately, as majority of Asian tarantulas, I mean Asian terrestrial tarantulas, it burrows, it is heavy burrower. Sometimes it is on the open, but most of the time, not really. But at least I have a nice looking enclosure. Down here, in this plexiglass enclosure, I have one arboreal tarantula. It is also hiding. It is called Pezzelteria hanuma villasumica, and it is pretty rare tarantula. Next up, it is something a bit different. I have a crab, a land crab. Let me just try to get it on the open. And hopefully he won't pinch me. Species name is, if I remember correctly, Getsarkinus quadratus. I'm not exactly sure. I just remove this part. <laughs> but anyway, you can you can have a look now. He's pretty cool fella, but also like tarantulas, always digs, always under something, you rarely see him. Here is another Hilobrahi species, this time Vietnam blue, but yeah, heavy burrower, so somewhere inside, can't really show it. And in this enclosure, 
This is something really cool. This is tailless whip scorpion. Latin name is Damon Diadema. They are also arachnids, but they are completely harmless. They don't have venom. And yeah, they're just they're just really cool. Go now. That is something a bit different, but cool. With that done, we can now go to this part of collection. For these smaller ones, I need to take a list because I don't remember all of them. For these smaller enclosures, I will just go through the species because majority of them you won't be able to see very well. So there is really no point into trying to open all enclosures and show you that. But I will tell you what I have. Here I have small Croatian scorpion. Here is Terinochilus murinus, here is oof, oof, 65, Holotele in say gold, yes, Holotele san, but I don't know, I don't remember how to pronounce it, sanguiniceps, and this one is Ceratogyrus darlingi, then we have two Psalopeus cambrigae, one Psalopeus pulher that actually molted, that's nice. And last one is Psalopeus, Psalopeus reduncus. Psalopeus reduncus, yes. And then on top we have Pelenobius muticus. We have one. Let me see if I can record it. One scorpling from this this Croatian scorpion, and this is the only one that survived out of nine of them. But yeah, at least one. And last is recently recently rehoused Kilobrahi species Vietnam Blue. Then here we have two Cirio Cosmos elegans, one two, and two Erinopelmas sozimai. Here Petsoteria regalis. And here inside somewhere it is usually shy. Uh, Pezzoteria Miranda. This is Pezzoteria rufilata. Young female. And down here, and down here, we have beautiful Acanthoscuria geniculata. Also young female. This enclosure contains Chromatopelma cyanepubescens male that I was talking about and he is currently eating so we won't disturb him too much. Here is Caribena versicolor. I still don't know what sex it is. And last species is actually a scorpion. The Latin name is Titius stigmurus. And it is a pretty cool species because, because they can be produced without pairing. You just need one and eventually you will have babies. Oh, and by the way, I made this hanging enclosure, I made this CD enclosures, and I also made all of my glass and that one plexiglass enclosure. They are all made by me and I have tutorials on how to make all of them, so check it out. Let's now go to these CD enclosures. Actually, I will set the table up and take the rest of the enclosure on the table. Now we have more familiar situation, CD enclosures. First, in this one, mm, you won't be able to see it. Let me try to poke it out. Mm. 
Whoa, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> almost, this was almost, no. Almost a disaster. Thank God I didn't open this lid completely because I was expecting something like that. But yeah, that what you almost saw bolting outside is Ciriopagopus, Ciriopagopus Cietei. For some time I was convinced that it is a female, but apparently I, I confused something or I don't know. I don't know why I believe. I don't know why I believe that this is a female, but one subscriber pointed out that it looks like it is a male and indeed it is a male. Second one, you are well familiar with this one. It is Linda, the Terafosa Stirmi. Super young female. This one is Tapinauhenius Violaceus. Female that made an egg sac, even though I never buried her. So that means that that egg sac that you can see here is not fertile. Sometimes tarantula do that. She made it like maybe a month ago. I don't know. Ramastola rosea, male, my first tarantula. <laughs> this is another. Another Ciriopagopus species, Hati Hati. And this is for sure a female. You won't really be able to see her, but I think that I have a clip. So if I have, it is playing right now and you are watching it. Here is African mm, Heteros, Heteroscodra maculata. Oh, here it is. Got her outside. in a thread posture. She is not amused. So Heteroscodra maculata. Here is Pterinohilus murinus, red color form. I also probably have some footage and less from CD enclosures. It is Nandu Tripepi, little guy. So that would be all from CD enclosures. Some of you probably know what's, what's in here. But first, Rahipelma Emilia. Here it is. Young male, you saw it recently in the video, and also what you recently saw in the video. True. Not sure if I should open this. Maybe better not, right? The devil himself, Scolopendra de Hani. You see that? And those little bugs that you can see crawling around, those are isopods and they are inside to clean the moist enclosure. So yeah, that's all. That's all. I don't want to disturb it anymore. And over there, you can see its enclosure. I'm currently working on it, currently it's curing, video about it probably this Friday. Honestly I can't wait to transfer this into a proper enclosure, so I can make normal videos. Now those, those white things that you saw in, the, in some of my enclosures, I can show you the car. GoPro's battery died, so I let it charge and went to bed. So it is actually a new day today. But anyway, these are the springtail colonies that I have. This and all these buckets. And those little white creatures that you see in some of my tanks, those are these guys. It is good to have them in moist environments because they eat dead prey. I mean the prey remains, they eat fungi, they eat mold. So all that bad stuff that you can have inside of your terrarium, 
these guys will take care of it. Here is the Balfouri communal that I recently rehoused. This is what they made. They are really shy, but I can usually see them at night. So in case you didn't know, even though most tarantulas can't live together because they are predators and they will eat each other, this species, Monocentropus Balfouri, they can actually live together. So they are really unique, really unique amongst tarantulas. There are also some other species that can be kept together, but not as successful as these guys. Here is the true spider that I recently acquired, Sergestina florentina. Segestria florentina, pardon. You can only see its butt, but since I, but, but, but since I recently acquired it, I have nice recordings that I can show. These are interesting because they live in nature, they live between cracks in walls. When you have two stones close to each other, but there's a crack, they would make a tube between and Wait for a prey. It's all spiders. I will take these guys out. Let's continue with true spiders. Here I have four, four, four Sicarius tomesoides. Four of these guys, and they live in sand. It is right here, and if I shake this. There it is. I really don't have luck with these GoPros. Oh, did he... Uh, memory card filled up, but this camera was still rolling and while I was replacing the memory card, it seems that he got covered with sand. And that is cool because I still didn't manage to record that. So we also have a footage of that. Nice. But anyhow, Four of these, they are highly venomous, but apparently their venom cause, how do you say it, your tissue to dissolve. So it would make a huge, huge wound. The thing is, they can climb this plastic or glass, so they are really easy to contain. Before people ask, I buy this little enclosure at local store, so I can't send you a link. I have three. This one made a burrow. I recently rehoused these. Those are Lasiodora difficilis. This guy is outside. He still didn't make a burrow. They are tiny slings, but they grow fast, so I put them in this bigger enclosure. So three of these, and from last video, Arpactira pulchripes. Really beautiful tarantula. And it used to be really, really expensive. But now the price is more affordable. Then here I have three Nandu Hormatus slings, a bit bigger slings. Here is one. And this little one is, from what I can see, preparing to molt. So we will disturb him a little bit just so I can just so I can show you how I know that. So you see under it it webs the area. And this is not the species that would no normally web a lot. Even if tarantula is not webbing the enclosure, like some species, all of them are still able to produce silk. But they have different behavior. I don't know. So it made a web mat. And once it's ready, it will turn over and start molting. This is pretty large, so I will be able to sex it. So I will set it aside to keep an eye on it. And this is last Nando Chromatus sling. Here it is. The local wolf spider. I don't know the species name, but I bet some of you already wrote in my last video, I still didn't check the comments. And this is the Archipelma Hamori X Smithy. In these two enclosures, Ciriopagopus lividum, you can see its legs down there. 
it is Asian and heavy burlor, so yeah, forget about seeing those. This one is Stromatopelma calceatum, also you can see it, but you can see its tunnel starts here and goes all the way here. Yeah, exciting, right? <laughs> now let's go to ants. Here is the Lassius nigger ant colony. It is rapidly increasing. They also have part of their nest in this test tube. It will be fun when I make a proper enclosure for them. And these guys... They are much, much bigger than Lassius nigger. Queen is huge. So yeah, it will be fun to watch how they grow and develop. Before showing you this, I will show you something else. Here I have frogs. Species name is Dendrobates auratus and, it got, and I got four of those. One, two, three, four. And they all got names. This one is Joker, this one is Milanovic, this one is Mai, and that one down there is Hecate. And they all have unique markings on their back and sides, so that is how I so that is how I know who is who. And here I have food for them, it's flightless fruit flies, a colony of these. And I will show you, I will show you the, the grossest part of Tarantula Hobby, oh, which colony is... This is the Blaptica dubia roach colony and these guys are Blata lateralis roach colony. So those are the feeders that I use together with flightless fruit flies that I showed. And I'm keeping them in this compartment that is insulated with styrofoam and got its own heater because they don't really reproduce on room temperature. Okay. Here is the recently molted Gramostola pulchripes. It is a young male. Then we have young female Nanduchromatus. And the last one is old male. Brachypelma albopilosum. And this is the last shelf. Here are... Mm, it just ran. Lampropelma violaceopes. Three Lampropelma violaceopes. No, I won't be able to show you because all of them are hiding. Oh, just this. Here. At least something. Pecelateria metallica. You can see that it recently molted. She actually molted two days ago and I have a time-lapse footage of her molting. And I also have a recording of her turning on her back. Here she is in all her greatness. They will slowly lose their blue coloration as they get older. So it is completely normal that they aren't as blue as they were when they were younger. <laughs> Yerko got freshly molted male, so that means in a month or so we will be pairing them. Wish me luck! And in these last two enclosures All the way down there, you can see a Pezzoteria ornata. She is my biggest tarantula and she is around 17 centimeters in the leg span. And here, in this last enclosure, I have Pezzoteria rufilata. And yeah, I can actually show her. But first I need to move this.
can't really show it that well because it made a lot of web but at least you can see that it is there to Pizzoteria Formosa I can at least confirm you that I don't have empty enclosures <laughs> that includes all the animals in this apartment I still have one more animal but to show you that I need to go to my mother's apartment so let's take a teleport okay three two one that was fast right Poopy. as you can see here I have a chinchilla they are nocturnal animals so he is a bit sleepy at the moment but he will come So his name is his name is Puffy. We have him for six years, and he is my my longest living pet. I used to have few hamsters, but but as you know, hamsters don't live that long. Chinchillas are really really stubborn animals. And and although oh, and although he loves attention, he doesn't like to be held. He loves scratches back scratches side scratches ear scratches nose scratches everything so his name is puffy but i call him pupa puppy pupek And I also built this cage and this was actually my first animal enclosure project, so to speak. Look how he is raising his left arm. Now right arm. He really loves those scratches. Now let's get back to the dark den. And while we were gone, someone actually started to molt. So good luck, little guy or a girl, whatever you are. Now about the giveaway. I have three spider shops sponsoring the giveaway. For United States, I have Jamie's Tarantula sponsoring it. The spider shop from UK will sponsor the UK giveaway. And Spiders World EU will sponsor the European giveaway. Each giveaway will contain three prizes. And one prize will be for YouTube, one prize will be for Facebook and one prize will be for Instagram. And you will be able to participate on all three giveaways. So three times more chance to win something. In next video, this Friday's video, I will be explaining the details of US giveaway, how to participate, what are the prizes and all of that. After that will come the UK giveaway and the last one will be the European giveaway. So stay tuned for that in next video and good luck to everyone. Now to end this, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it wasn't too hectic, it is not as easy as I thought to record full collection tour, but I hope it was a bit interesting, now you can see everything that I have in one video, so if you enjoyed it, comment something, like it, and if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe, I upload every Monday and Friday, so see you again soon, goodbye!